Hey everybody, this session that I'm going to be covering is called Beyond the Joint, Unraveling the Social Tapestry. And the speaker is Kira Freeman. She's the Operations Manager for Journey Health Services. And um, I thought that this was a very interesting session because um, it talks about the things that aren't um, necessarily medical when it comes to treating patients with Rheumato rheumatologic diseases or arthritis diseases. And she talks about bridging the gap between the social determinants of health or social drivers of health and health disparities. And bridging the gap brings health equity. For those of you who don't know who the, what the social determinants of health are, it encompasses economic and social conditions that influence the health of people and communities. And health disparities are indicators that can be used to assess the impact of social determinants of health on overall life outcomes of individuals. And health equity is basically the idea of being able to bring the patients what they may need, not necessarily, hold on, it'll go into it here. Let's see if I can find it here. There's a slide that's really great in explaining what equity versus equality means. And that's something that a lot of people may have a hard time grasping, that more people need help, more help compared to others. And that in itself is equity not and not equality. Equality means that no matter what situation someone's in, that they will all get the same thing. So equality at the top would be everybody gets the same bike and whoever needs to use it will use it however they can but equity would mean giving everybody the right size bike and that's what we mean when sometimes we have to make sure that we are meeting the patient where they're at or meeting yeah meeting the patient where they're at in terms of when you're providing education or when I'm providing education some people may know a lot of things about their disease and some people may not. You want to get that context of how much they know so you're not going over their head or talking to them in a more childish or immature manner. So you want to make sure that you're meeting the people where they're at in order to provide them with all the information that they need to be able to get to that same level that other people may be at. And yeah, that was something that it stood out to me. It's something that I'm very passionate about. And we talk about specifically the economic impact on rheumatology patients. I'm sure that every single one of you can relate to this because we spend a lot of money on our bodies and our medication and our tools that help us and our supplements and our vitamins and our creams and <laughs> everything that we need to get through the day. These are the points that she hits about how rheumatology patients are in, impacted economically. Lower productivity because of the pain and the fatigue and everything that we may be going through. It's a low lower productivity. She puts an example that rheumatoid arthritis can account for 30% loss in productivity. Then that leads into loss of financial compensation. You may need to work less hours. You may even get not be able to work anymore, that can also obviously loss of financial compensation and also decrease in social interaction. Specifically in the pandemic, we were probably all extremely scared to be able to get to be in any public place. But just in general, we don't really go out as much as people who don't have our diseases. So I think that, yep, that can lead to two to three times more likely to experience depression. And I think a lot of practitioners may not put into practice or consider these things when they are providing care. And so that's why she is providing this information to make sure that it's still in the back of your mind that maybe the certain treatments that you want to recommend to a patient may not fit in their social, their socioeconomic status or what they're able to what they're able to do in terms of being able to go get your blood drawn every 3 weeks if you need to or if you have to pay a really high copay for that medication is that something that the patient is going to be sustainable for the patient she talks about why 
clinicians or providers may not be able to address the social determinants of health during appointments. And of course, number one is time constraints. They don't know resources to connect them to. They just don't have the exposure to that, or it's just outside the scope of that person's knowledge. And lastly, she talks a lot about how to be able to address address health equity and the different things that are in place and can be put in place to better serve all patients. And the top things that she talks about is incorporating a social determinants of health screening into intake for patients. Ask them, are you able to pay for your medication? Are you able to get transport to your infusion? Are you able to get transport to your doctor's appointments? How do you get to your doctor's appointments? Making sure to utilize social workers or community health workers to develop community partnerships. That's super important, but also um, groups like us, like arthritis, needing to get into rheumatology offices in order for them to know about our resources and what we can do to help educate and support patients because, again, practitioners, clinicians, they can't do it all themselves. They do need resources to refer out to. And so that's why we're there to be able to give some support that's needed. Developing mobile clinic options or extended clinic times. I think if rheumatology offices were able to shift their schedules maybe once a week to have appointments from five to eight, that would highly increase the chance that um, people would be able to go so that they don't have to take off time for work and things like that. Or if they don't work and the person who has to bring them to the um, appointment works, then that is also helpful. Also being able to seek out medication delivery options so that the patient does not have to be able to, or does not have to be able to go to the pharmacy every few weeks. Like for me, it's so frustrating when your medications are on different schedules. I have two medications that I pick up at one time. And then two weeks later, I have to pick up three more medications. And it's just frustrating that I have to keep going out of my way to go and pick up the medications and they said that they couldn't use the delivery service because I'm in an apartment complex and it said in their system, it was a commercial area so that they wouldn't let them deliver it. But I'm just uh, I'm making sure delivery options like that are open for everybody would save people gas, money, time, and save their body from not having have to, have to do extra errands. And also another thing about providing health equity is providing interpreter services. I think that's a really big thing for a lot of the country. There's so many people who do, who where English is their second language. And just because that is the case, that doesn't mean that they don't have the same rights to fully understand their condition and fully understand their medications and everything that they're going through. Those are the, the different things that she said that could help with bringing health equity to communities. A few others would be maybe food assistance programs for those who don't have access to fresh foods. And yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. And I think it was super important that this was a session at this conference because there is a whole body, a whole person that is behind these diseases and treating the disease is great, but treating the whole person is much better and it makes the patient feel seen and understood. So I think, I think that this was a great session. Alrighty. See you soon.